have been getting to know the uh, dance club scene in my 40s. Yeah. So the first time I uh, kind of went to a club, not the first time I went, but the first time it's like, you know, va 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 boom, you know, hey baby, you know, like that, kind of going to a club, was when I was 40. And my friends take me to this club, and I'm like, oh my god, I love it here. It's like multicultural heaven. <gasps> brown and black and Asian and white and everybody's hot and everybody's hip and I'm like but then I'm like oh my god but I'm 40 I just turned 40 and everybody's they're gonna be like oh they're gonna be so much younger they're so much younger than me so I'm just like okay I'm like you know giving myself a pep talk I'm like that's all right girl work with what you got work with what you got work the cleavage work the cleavage girl they won't even notice all right so I walk in there and uh, you know it's like a fabulous club for women who love black men you know I mean great for those women and um <laughs> You know, so as it turns out, you know, I'm not there very long, and sure enough, this, uh, I notice this black guy, he's like checking me out, and I can tell he's looking at me, and he's like, let's see, light skin, dark hair, this is LA, so she could be Armenian, Jewish, Latina, I don't know, but, but he's like, I don't care, the cleavage is working for me. So he comes over, he's like, so what's your name, sweetheart? Maria Elena. He's like, ma, ma, ma. And I can see all the lights go on, and he's like, yes, I scored me an authentic Latina. I can't even pronounce her name. <laughs> and before I know it, we're, and, I, and all of a sudden, I realized that all those stereotypes that I railed against when I was taking women's studies and teaching women's studies, they're like totally working for me. So I'm like, si, papacito, yo lo hago todo, yo bailo, yo canto, yo te caliento la cama, mi amor. The next thing I know, we're on the dance floor, and we're getting closer and closer, and our bodies are in perfect synchronicity. We're just like this, our bodies are this far apart from each other, I can feel this breath on my neck, and then, ooh. Papacito, is that your iPhone or are you just happy to see me? And at that moment, I feel so powerful, so powerful. I just want to do this over and over again with random, fine, black and Latino men over and over again. Well, fast forward five years later. I've learned a few lessons about the um, club scene. Lesson number one, club boys do not follow up. They will always take your number, but they will not follow up. They may keep texting you, but they don't actually ask you out, which is just as well, because I'm still a woman in my 40s, fighting the good fight against ageism and sexism, out there on that dance floor, despite the media blast saying that our lives are worthless at this age, standing up for our natural beauty, no dyed hair, no liposuction, no forms of plastic surgery, no laser hair removal. Hell, I even stopped bleaching my mustache. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, armed with only my superpower push-up bra, Maybelline, and high heels. That's right. Love it or leave it, baby. I'm still on that dance floor, full of power, full of passion, full of cleavage, <laughs> and mortified about my crow's feet and canas. Translation, gray hair. <laughs> The other day I was getting ready to go dancing and I'm like, oh my god, there's like, okay, not just random strands of gray, not the ones at the temple that I can hide by going like that and like this. No, there's like a patch and I'm like, I have to get rid of at least half of this. Tweezing away, tweezing away, one more. All right, so then I'm on the dancer with my girlfriend and next thing I know there's this young black guy and he's smiling at me like right in front of me, he starts dancing with me. And so we're dancing, getting closer and closer. Next thing I know, he has me up against the wall and I can't even enjoy it because I'm just thinking, oh my God, I feel like such a fraud. He has no idea how old I am. I'm so glad it's like really dark in here. I mean, I'm lucky if he's like 26 years old. But we dance till 1.30 in the morning and sure enough, in true club boy form, he gets my number and he texts me all the way home. And I'm like, okay, that was nice. I won't hear from him again. But Jeremy Kiss and Grind actually texts me and calls me. Yeah, I, I give them the last name of the club where I met them or else if I never hear from them again, then I know who the hell is on my phone, who the hell, why that person is even on my phone, right? So anyway, so Jeremy Kiss and Grind actually texts me and calls me. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm here in LA doing the actor thing. And I'm like, yeah, well, I teach at Cal State Northridge and I'm a writer too. And he's like, you know, um, I'm going out of town for the next two weekends, but maybe we can have 
lunch during the week. And I'm like, sure, darling. But what I'm really thinking is, not broad daylight, no! Not that! Oh, God, no, that I'm really going to see all the gray, all the crow's feet, and not. No, he's going to like run away. But I had nothing to worry about because Jeremy, Chris, and Grind never actually asked me out. He just kept texting me and instead gave me a wonderful gift. So he texts me one morning like he does sometimes and he says, morning love, what you doing? And I throw my books in my car and I'm like, I'm rushing to school right now. And before I can start my car engine, he replies, girl, you teaching with a body like that? <laughs> yes! 